Does anyone, does anyone have any resolutions this morning? I mean, 2019's here, resolutions, the new year resolutions are on us, and, and we've got these things that we want to change about our lives, so we say, you know, my new year's resolution this morning is I'm going to eat better, right? No? Not today? Not today? My new year's resolution is I'm going to become more fit. My New Year's resolution is I'm going to, I don't know, what's a New Year's resolution somebody has? Anybody? No one? No one does New Year's resolution? No, I don't want to be different this year as last year. I want to be the same person. I'm okay being the same exact person I was last year because I don't need to grow any. No one said that? So we got some, some things that people are thinking about in 2019. I need to improve here and here and here and here and here. And if we're all honest with ourselves, if we really have this thing in us that says 2019 is a new year, then we're looking at new things. We're looking at new opportunities. We're looking at new changes. We're looking at new diets, maybe. We're looking at new workout patterns. We're looking at new worship patterns or reading patterns or study patterns or whatever it is. We're always looking. But without the right mindset, those resolutions are just going to be what we call resolutions, and they just die off at the end. They last about January, February, and then March happens, and it's what? And that's why this year, Christ's New Covenant, you are not allowed to have a resolution. Amen. No. No, you're not allowed to have a resolution at all. You're allowed to have something that's defined as a surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way about your personal life. Or a divine or supernatural disclosure to your human activity of something relating to a human existence or the world. You're allowed to have a revelation this morning. And tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. When God lets you know something from the Word, it is always going to be a surprising new light bulb moment. And a revelation is a surprising new light bulb moment. When we have a revelation, it's like, aha, I've got it. And then all of a sudden, our mind shifts to a new direction. Earlier in 2018, I was talking to Mark, Mark Hahn, and he was discussing his diet with me. But he wasn't just sharing with me his diet. He was sharing with me scripture for his diet. And I was like, aha, that makes sense. Oh my goodness. Lord, are you talking to me? And I took three months and ate specifically that way because the Lord brought upon a new revelation for me and it shocked me to my core and my mindset changed and I started walking a direction that God had for me. A resolution will die. But if it has a revelation in front of it, that resolution will be conquered and you will succeed. As long as you have the revelation in front, you have a revelation from God, a new mindset, and you can go in. I haven't even gotten into scripture yet. This is all revelation. You have to have a revelation for a successful resolution. If you don't have that revelation, if you don't have that aha moment, then you are really going to wear yourself out. So as you think about those resolutions you set, maybe you need to start thinking about the revelation God's wanting to set. Jesus always taught in parables. Why do I talk about revelation this morning? Because Jesus always talked about parables, hoping that at least one of his disciples would get a revelation from his parable. And I want to read one of those parables to you real quick. Is that cool? I don't care. I'm going to read it anyway. Mark 4, verse 1 it's going to be on the screen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. Otherwise, it's going to be on the screen. And it says this, NLT, that's what I'm preaching out of today. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd gathered, soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat. 
Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Verse 2. Sorry, verse 3. Listen. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across the field, some of the seed fell on the footpath and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon with, with, wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns and grew up and choked out the tender plant so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced crop that was 30, 60, and even a 100 times as much as had been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. How many of you this morning have already gotten a revelation for your 2019 out of that scripture? And that's exactly the response the disciples had. This should be enough. This parable should be enough. This is Jesus speaking. This is red letter, King James, Jesus speaking. This is his words. These, these words are not a man's word. These are God's words, straight from the mouth of Jesus. And he's speaking. And his disciples, he would always hope they would get it. He knew who would get it and who wouldn't. He would always hope they would get it. And they had the same response you just had. What did I get? So we know we're in good company. When we read that parable and we go, oh, I'm not quite sure. I can tell you what I've learned in the past. But if I read that as is for the first time ever in my life, like I acted like this was the first time, what kind of revelation are we getting? What kind of revelation is God wanting to share with you in that scripture Right now, for this year, for this moment, what revelation does he want to pour out on you? See, when we read the word, we should read it as if it has never been read by us before. Because when we read it as if we've never read it before, God has more of an opportunity to open our mind to see a new, fresh revelation than three weeks ago when we read it the other time. And so when he's reading it, his disciples had the response, Check this out, Mark 4, verse 10. Later, when Jesus was alone with the 12 disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parables meant. Stop for a second. How many of you have ever pulled a teacher aside when no one else was looking and said, in your childhood or, or currently, and said, I don't get what you said because you're too embarrassed to ask in front of the rest of the class. But now, how many others in that class didn't get what the teacher said and they're missing out. Oh, wow, there's a new revelation. I, that's not in my notes. That is fresh. That is right here. You just got the original from Ben. We come in. We ask questions. We push the class aside. We pr push the large crowd aside and go, Jesus, I don't know what you mean. Right? But instead, in front of everybody, we should be a bit able and transparent and, and so willing to share our ignorance. That, that people can grow around us. If I'm wanting to grow, my ignorance has to come out because I have to ask questions. When I read the Word of God, if I don't just go, God, I just don't get it, I'll never grow. If I go, God, okay, I'm reading your words and I get it, and I don't, I'm real good clay, aren't I? I'm real hard. That's the way some of us have lived our lives in seasons. And God says, no, 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 no. Don't be hard. Don't be, no, you don't get it. It's okay. Come to me. Ask me the question you want to ask. Go to someone else. You might get a revelation from God through someone else as you go, I don't get what you're saying. Okay, let me explain. You know, Evan, I don't get it, man. Tell me what it says. And Evan goes, what do you mean you don't get it? You're a pastor. Yeah, man, I'm just as flawed as everybody else. Amen, right? You got a pastor who is flawed and broken, and he's leading broken people. Congratulations. Welcome to the world of ministry. I love it. The, 
the disciples are curious. That's a good thing. But the place they asked, they could have asked where everybody could have heard the reasoning or, or what Jesus was going to say. Thankfully, Mark was smart enough to write it down. Check this out. Verse 11, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything to, I say to outsiders so that the scripture might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? He's, he's saying, hey, you're doing something to fulfill prophecy, but at the same time, check yourself. If you don't get this one, how are you going to follow me? Because I'm going to tell you a bunch of parables, and I'm not so sure you're on the same page with me. Anybody ever be on the, the, a different page with your spouse or your significant other or your friends? And it's like, no, 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 you, you don't hear me. I'm never on a different page than my wife. I'm always five pages ahead. She's just trying to catch up. I'll get beat later. Just kidding. We'll edit that out of the video. No, seriously, like, like we're always on two different pages with people. There's, there's never one time that we're going to agree completely all the time. You know, there's, this week I'm going to agree with Lola a lot because she's going to be in Colorado. I'm going to be in, in, in Illinois, and it's going to be easy peasy. When we get back, guess what? She's over here. I'm over here. We got to figure out how to come here again. It's a good test of our character, and it's a good test of our marriage when we say, you know what? We're not on the same page today. Let's try. Let's not separate, but let's try to become on the same page. And that's the same thing with our friends, the ones we love. When we come in, Jesus is saying this, how are you going to understand anything if you don't understand, if you're not on the same page with me? See, Jesus is calling them out. You're not on the same page. We're in the same story, but you're like on the, the intro. You're on the introduction that Moses wrote, and I'm writing this story right now, and you need to catch up, right? And so, so here Jesus is calling them out, but saying, hey, guess what? This is fulfilling prophecy. I want you to come ask me. You know, it would be better if we could tell the whole world what Jesus meant. It would be. But in this situation, it wasn't. Does anyone yet have, have a new revelation yet from that scripture? Anyone? You got new stuff for a new morning? It's made fresh? No? Okay. I'm going to keep on asking. Mark 4.14. 4, the farmer planted seed by taking God's word to others. Okay, now do you have fresh revelation? Okay, okay. 15, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Okay, more revelation. Okay, he's speaking directly to you, direct, directly at you. It's really cool. The seed of, on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Anybody ever in your life ever hear the, the salvation story? Jesus Christ, he came, he died on the cross for you. He, he, he didn't just die on the cross for you, but to take your sins away. And then he was crucified on the cross, right? And that represents him taking the sin. And, and then he is raised back to life to give you that same eternal life that you would know him forever and ever and ever and ever and have many many more opportunities where there's more sin, there's more grace, blah, 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 blah. I could go on, I could go on, I could go on. Did you ever have that revelation that that was for everybody? Did you ever, ever sit there and go, I'm going to accept that right now? And day two, you're like, oh, I don't know, did I make a good decision? I don't know. I, I remember as a kid, I'd go to Youthquake with Open Bible in Mountain Plains region. And, and what we would do is we'd gather all the churches, all the youth groups from all the churches. We'd meet and we'd catch a fire. And then we'd go back to school the next week and nothing would change. Anybody? No? That's never happened. I'm the only one in the room that's ever happened to. I'm so disappointed in you, Ben. How could you be a pastor now if that's how that happened? And hey, that's cool. But that was the soil I was planted in. That's the soil that I represented Christ with. Here's, here's the power. Here's the joy. Oh, God, I accept it. I'll take it. I'm going to school. I'm going to... Ah, beep. Beep, 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 beep. 
teacher, I don't like you. Showing Jesus to everybody, you know. But what if I chose to be good soil? Then? What if I chose to be more pliable? Then? What if I chose to be deeper soil that day? Because he gives you that opportunity. He gives you the, uh, the, the tools that you need to become nutrients to what's being planted into you. Check this out. Verse 17, but since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away soon as they have problems and, or are persecuted for believing God's word. Anybody ever made fun, made, being made fun of because you chose to believe? And your attitude changed? Yeah. Verse 18, the seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. The lure of wealth and the desires for other things. So no fruit is produced. Man, anybody, I can, I can tell you a story. Okay. Verse 20. And the seed that fell on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. All of a sudden, we're starting to get revelations in our life. God's starting to open things up. Where was I here in this section? This season, and that season, and that season, and that season. Most important, where am I today, and where am I going to be tomorrow? And all of a sudden, you're asking God, how can I become this good, deep soil that when I hear your word, when I read your word, when I study your word, when I find out what it means, and I, I really dig in, how am I going to plant that so deep into who I am, into who my being is, that it hits my foundation, and it, and it starts growing into the foundation and producing life from the foundation that I start reaching out and I start ministering so much so that as I overflow with the Holy Spirit, the people under me are catching it. How do I become that soil, God? Anybody here want to become that soil that's so deep that when God plants something new in you, you are just so excited that you take your time and you don't go out to the streets right away, but you go into the Word. Or you go into prayer. Or you worship out of a place of newness. I mean, isn't that good? I don't know about you, but I'm sitting here going, I want to be made new every morning. I want my sins forgiven every morning. I want to be... I want to be that guy who, who represents Jesus like, like Jesus represented Jesus. You know, I want to be that guy who represents the Father like Jesus did. I want to go back to age 12 and be that kid who his parents left behind but didn't have to worry because I was in the temple teaching the teachers. Isn't that good? I have one reason for being. I have one purpose for and out of this scripture, if all you get is that I have one reason, one purpose, yourself, and, and, and we have one reason, and one purpose for hearing this, is to reach the lost for the glory of the king who loves us and serves us. And that's all you need. That's all you should have. But maybe that's not what you get. Maybe you get something else. Maybe you get something that says, I just need to be planted in good soil finally. I just need to find that soil and become what God always dreamt I would become. I read a, I read a quote. I, was it Dick Van Dyke that said this? No, it wasn't. Dick Van Dyke said another quote. There are no sure answers. There are only better questions. This quote that I want to say, now I forgot it because I, re, re, Dick Van Dyke, he gets in your brain, you know? We come so close every time when we're planted and, and, and say we, we don't realize what's around us or we don't realize what's under us and, and we have not so deep soil. And we hear something, we go, oh, that's good, and we write it down and then we forget it. You know, God, God is wanting to break into your mind and reveal something to you. And that's good. Anybody want God to break into your mind? Everybody goes, no, nah, because then he sees my sins. Uh-uh, he already knows those, so get over yourself. But don't you want him to break into your mind and set you free from the trials and tribulations that you are 
going through in your mind or, or maybe that you're going through throughout the day or throughout the week. Maybe you want God to break into your mind and set you free from yourself. I love that. Anybody get the revelation? Yeah, I'm in good soil now. I'm in good soil. The revelation that changes your mindset. Like tomorrow you're going to wake up and go, Lord, I want to be nutrient full and I want to grow a vineyard that produces fruit today. I want to be a whole crop of us farmer. I want to plant an entire crop for you, God. And at the same time, I want to nurture them. I want to give them the nutrients that you're giving me, but I can't do it unless I'm deep soil, God. Anybody want to be deep soil? Man, that sounds dirty, doesn't it? Good dirty. Like dirt under your fingernails dirty. That's exactly what it is. That's good dirty. Jesus wants to reveal to us new life this year. And it's in the deep soil. It's not in the shallow soil. It's not in the thorny area of your yard. It's not in the weeds. It's not in the water grass, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know about that until I came here. You know what I'm saying? It's not in the, it's not in the things that overtake your yard. It's in the things that are supposed to be produced in your yard. It's in the peas and the beans and the broccoli and the, do I dare say, Brussels sprouts. It's in that. It's in the life-giving nutrients that we put into our body. It, it, that's our crop spiritually. And we have to nurture that. We have to grow that. And God is saying, Jesus is saying to us this year, you are new this year. 2019, it's not about the resolutions, it's about the revelation so that you can create the resolutions and not just have a resolution that you just create, but actually follow through with. If I have a resolution this year, I'm going to be more fit. Have I had the revelation yet? I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have another resolution. I'm going to eat as healthy as I did in 2018, if not try to be more. Hey, there's, there's room for growth there but I want to be healthier, not only in my spiritual walk, but also in my physical walk. We're down to one car. Why? Because I can walk. I'm going to walk. I'm going to ride my bike. My goal this year is 100 miles one day on my bike. That's been my goal for the past five years. But I just want to do it. Why? Because it's good for me. I'm not saying it's good for you. I'm saying it's good for me. Check this out. Lamentations 3, verse 22. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. It doesn't matter what you've done today. Tomorrow is new. It doesn't matter how much you've gone off the deep end. Tomorrow is new. But you have to have a revelation that today is new as well. Today, you leave here, it's new, it's fresh, it's, it's revealing, it's, trans, it, it, it's taking you into a new area of your life. You have to walk out of here going, I'm made new today. I've, made, I've been made new this year. I've been made new tomorrow. I've been made new. I'm having that revelation that I get to be new every morning. Even in Lamentations, in the Old Testament, they knew that. Now you have Jesus. How much easier is that? Paul even says it later in, in, in Scripture that, that we are made new every morning. We are made new every morning. With, you, you know, talking about being made new, you've got to think about being old. Anybody ever shoot an arrow? Do you know what they call missing the mark in archery? S-Y-N. It's pronounced sin. Sin, it's one sin, two sin, three sin for how far off you were. Do you know that means missing the mark? And so when we miss the mark today, God says in Romans, where there is more sin, there is more grace. So when we, when we miss the mark in our journey today, he comes in and says, hey, that's all right, come back to me. Come back to me, I can forgive you. I just want your time. I just want your, your money. I just want your house. I just want your family. I just want whatever everything is to you. That's what he wants. That's all. 
No one's laughing. That's good. We're all taking that serious. But, but when we missed the mark for a while, God's still sitting there tapping on your shoulder going, I still love you. I still love you. Today can be new. Today can be new. And it's annoying when you're missing the mark. You're like, God, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm missing the mark on purpose sometimes, God. And I don't, oh, can you just knock it off? And he's like, no, you can't brush this dirt off because this is clean. Anybody ever try to brush clean off? It doesn't work. Jesus sits here and he says, hey, you can miss the mark as much as you want. But I'm always going to be here. I'm always going to be right here. Now, saying, Jesus, I want you is not a license to sin. It's not a license to miss the mark. It's a license to grow, to become that deep soil. It's a license to have that fresh revelation. I promise this was a longer message. Hey, congratulations. We're working into 2019. I'm going. I'm going for it. See, every time you miss the mark, it's okay because we have that hope in Christ. Every morning we have new hope. We have new chances. We have new possibilities. We have new life. We have new forgiveness. Don't fall in love with potential. Fall in love with the actual thing. Fall in love with the idea. Don't fall in love with potential. Don't fall in love with possible. Fall in love with doing. You know, as you get re revelation, don't fall in love with the potential. I can come into a room and see so much potential, but if I fall in love with potential, we'll never access what God has given us because if I'm falling in love with potential, I'm always going to fall in love with potential and it's going to keep on going in a circle and it's not going to make any sense. And potential is potential, and potential is potential, and it's not actually doing anything. Did I just make any sense to anybody? God doesn't fall in love with your potential. He falls in love with what you're going to do. Every morning, you can have new forgiveness for people. Every morning, we can have a new chance to share the gospel where we forgot yesterday, we can pick it up today. We can forgive someone who did us wrong every morning. You know what? It doesn't matter if you think they did, that you, they did you wrong. If you know you did them wrong, go to them. If you don't think you did them wrong, go to them. Say, I'm sorry. Be the bigger people. Jesus came into your life. Don't hold a grudge. It's that simple. I'm so sorry that I was holding a grudge. You didn't know I was holding the grudge, but I'm so sorry I held the grudge on you. I held you in a bad light. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's healthy. It's becoming deep soil that when you grow up, it's like, hey, I've been holding a grudge on you for 10 years now, and I am so sorry. I couldn't even tell. Really? Well, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I don't even know if there's anything to forgive me. Just say, forgive me. You know, come on. You, you're new every morning. If you're deep soil, you're going to be new every morning. You're going to break through new things every morning. Every morning, you're going to be planted. And you're going to have a chance to sprout up and become new every morning. You're going to break through barriers every morning. I was just watching a show this week called Titan or something with The Rock. And if it has The Rock in it, it's pretty awesome. And there's this one, and, and you have to be pretty strong, so I would never do it. But you run with this cord and you pull this weight and, and it has to go up through blocks. And you're pulling and you're pulling and you might make it through the first one. But you got to make it through five of them. And this guy, he pulls and this is our spiritual life. This is it on steroids. You got to pull and go through two or three or four and break through those barriers that are stopping you from doing what God is calling you to do. It's new every morning. Hell has a worry, and its name is Christ in the Bible. Do you know that? I mean, you can say amen, and you can say thank you, Lord, and you can say, yeah, I know, but do you actually know it? Do you believe it? Because you don't have any clue what I believe right now, but I'm saying, oh, man, I've set goals for you guys. It's good to have goals. They're deep. Like, this is my, I've got something going on. Y'all are going to be scared. 
Jesus says, Christ's new covenant, you're my body. You're my peeps. I just said peeps. It's not even, it's not even Easter. Hell has a worry, and its name is Christ's new covenant because we realize today we are going to be planted in such a soil we only want to share him. That's the only thing on our hearts when we wake up. We're going to wake up, we're going to be in that deep soil, and the only thing we can think about is breaking through our own stuff to get to his people. We're going to get to his people, we're going to share the gospel, people are going to come to know him, they're going to get baptized, and they're going to follow through. But it's not just Ben's passion. It's yours. I can't go and and say what I need to say to everybody. The Holy Spirit can. But it requires a people. A people that aren't tired. But are energized through the revelation that God's given to them. Joshua 4.22. I've got to explain this a little bit. We're looking forward to 2019. I'm, I'm almost done if the band wants to come on up. Joshua 22. We, we're, we're sitting here and, and the Israelites are crossing the Jordan. They cross the Jordan on dry ground. This is the second time this happened. They're crossing, the, they're crossing something, a river, a body of water on dry ground. And they're coming across and, and something happens. God tells them to do one specific thing. And Joshua 4.22 says, Then you can tell them this is where the Israelites cross the Jordan on dry ground. It's the stones. They plant 12 stones as a remembrance of what God delivered them from. And it's so that they can tell their kids and their kids and their kids. And my job here right now is not to go minister to the town. It's to influence people to create a church that my kids, grandkids can come to. It's about not creating legacy or history. It's about creating a future. If we're tired, get over it. My God came to plant us in new soil. And when there's new soil, there's new energy. Oh, man, that, that, oh, I didn't plan on doing anything this week, God. Now you come and you talk to me and I, I, gotta, I gotta change my life. I gotta change my mindset. I gotta have a new, fresh mindset so I can be planted, not in the soil on the reservation, but in the soil that's well-nourished. In Illinois, we got some good soil around here, don't we, Mark? We got some great soil around here. You're in Illinois, start acting like it. Seriously, you're in the center of the United States, start acting like you can reach somebody. When people say, what is your church? Remember the 12 stones. My church, my church is a place you can live your purpose. You know what our mission is for 2019? Be kingdom minded and gospel advancing. We're kingdom minded because we're building the kingdom of God in each other. And we're gospel advancing because we're out to reach the lost because Jesus can set them free Make them free, make them free, break their chains, break their sin, break their turmoil, take them to new grounds, plant them in deep soil because Jesus is the answer for the deep soil. If we're seeking my needs, if I'm at home going, God, what can I get? I'm not doing nothing. How do I feel? I'm not getting nothing. My relationship with God is not built on a feeling. It's built on a realization that he is the king of kings. I can't get with that. What can I get with? We are about loving others so much that they literally run away because there is too much forgiveness and too much love and too much joy because in 2019, we are just that good. We're too good to be true, but we're not because Jesus is even better. Are you hungry? Start drinking. Drinking the water that God has given us to produce life. Start eating. Eating the food that God has blessed us with to produce life and start grabbing a hold of the revelations because when there's a revelation, there's a new mold in who you are because God has called you out. He's called you out today. I'm calling you out because I believe God is calling you out. So step up, stand out, and go forward. Jesus loves you. Know that. 
He wants you to do everything in your power to speak his word. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He died on the cross for you to have eternal life so that you could live forever with him because he's so jealous of you. He wants you to be with him. And he wants it now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, if someone's sitting on the, the stump and just like sitting on the edge and they're just saying, you know, I'm not sure if I want to be planted in deep soil, Lord, I pray that this week would be their test. This week would be their, their revelation. That this week they would have a new mindset that says, I want to be planted in deep soil. That says, I'm not about me anymore. I'm about you, God. What is it that you want? How should I talk? How should I approach people? How should I go forward with your name on my lips? Because it's not about I anymore. It's about you. Jesus, we ask for those that haven't made a commitment. Lord, I pray that you would speak. And Lord, if there's anyone that makes, makes a commitment today, Lord, I pray that, that you would honor them, that you would bless them, and that they would just turn to you and say, God, I just want you. Jesus, come into my heart. Take over what isn't yours and make it yours. Jesus, we love you with everything we are. I'm so glad that you prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane so passionately that you bled so I could be passionate. Lord, so I could be passionate about the one thing I really, 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 truly, madly, deeply love more than anything else in the world, and that's you. Jesus, forgive us of our sins that we've had this week and, and, and set us into that deep soil. Make us plant it, plant us deep have us sprout out wide and tall so that when people come around, it is just contagious. We love you in everything that you want. Jesus, thank you. Amen. Hey, let's worship out. We're going to do two songs. And we're just, can you put your passion where your mouth and arms are and just worship God? Just, oh, just go for it. Just like it's a sports activity or something. Like the Cowboys just won their first playoff game in a couple years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Praise Jesus. That's, come on. Let's worship.